So today we're sous vide pot roast. This is your grandmother's pot roast recipe on crack. It's pretty cool. So you may not know what sous vide is. Sous vide is a process of heating a piece of meat or fish or eggs or whatever you could possibly put in a bag. So you're, you're going to submerge in a bag whatever you want to sous vide and you're going to add this instrument, this sous vide instrument, and it's going to keep a consistent temperature over a long period of time. Sous vide pretty much means it's gonna take time. So I sous vide eggs before where normal hard boiled eggs take about 10 to 15 minutes. These took an hour and they were probably the best eggs I've ever had. So sous vide pot roast, let's get to it. So a pot of water, that's pretty much all you're gonna need for equipment. I like to start with hot water, it takes less time to heat up. So let's go over the piece of equipment that is going to do the sous vide for you. I use the Nova Wi-Fi enabled sous vide machine. Why the Wi-Fi? Why not? So here's the minimum level of water to the maximum level of water. So as long as you have enough water sub to submerge what you're cooking, and it still hits the minimum of a requirement, you're good. So you've got your pot of water. I put it on a trivet so it didn't burn through the countertops. Pretty much all you do is make sure it's submerged to the minimum, screw it on there, make sure everything's set and get it started. If you do not have a sous vide machine, this recipe is not for you. Wait till next week when another video drops. I haven't figured a way to make it without it. So I downloaded the app, here we go. We're setting the temperature to 145. We're gonna cook this pot roast for 24 hours. That's right, 24 hours. So it's showing you the target temp and the current temp. Your timer will not start until the current temp and the target temp or the, are the exact same. Here's the warning for it. As you can see, it is slowly heating up. So while we're waiting for that to heat up, let's get everything together that we need. I had a frozen pot roast, so I dethawed that, and I'm gonna start seasoning it. You can make sure that this is dry by patting it down. You don't really want any extra liquid in there unless you put it in. So this is really simple seasoning. Salt is obviously number one, pepper being the second one. You don't have to add a lot of seasoning because the seasoning and the beef are gonna to sit together a lot. Garlic powder, I also ended up putting real garlic into because extra flavor, I guess. And then onion powder. I did put in dehydrated onions as well. You can put real onions, but dehydrated onions were pretty quick. And then basil leaves. These were cool too. Mind you, I'm using mostly dehydrated stuff since it's gonna sit with the beef for so long. I did rub it with a little bit of avocado oil, cause why not, just to be safe. So then I flipped that baby over and did the exact same thing. I'll try and speed it up here so you don't have to watch me do it again. So now you're gonna grab a Ziploc bag or any kind of bag. You can do the vacuum seal bags or whatever. I've got a gallon size bag and I take my beef roast and I just drop it in there. Next, I'm adding more garlic. Yes, you have seen this before. I love this already diced garlic. It is so easy, it lasts forever. I mean, it lasts as long as you use it. So I normally go through one of these about every three or four months. Side note, look at my little Superman pajamas, yikes. I'm also gonna add onion. This is dehydrated and chopped. Why did I add dehydrated onion? Because it was in my cupboard and I didn't have to chop up an onion, it was really simple. So 
So here's a little trick to get the air out. It's a submerging method, submerged method, whatever. You're gonna try and get all of the air out by submerging it in water and then sealing it up. You don't want any air bubbles because if it floats, it's not cooking, it's not in the water. As you can see, I got pretty much all the air out. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is plastic wrap the top. Or if you put it in another container that has a lid, put the lid on it. This is to keep the water in. It will evaporate because it's 145 degrees. Alrighty, so this has gone about seven hours, eight hours, I don't know. It's getting very close to done. As you can see, all that meat is underneath the water. It's circulating the water. Everything looks good. Rewrap it and let it go a little bit longer. Add water if you need to. Here is 24 hours. It's ready to go. So I'm using a cookie sheet with a wire rack in it. This is to take out the beef and let it rest. And to get all the liquid off. I'm gonna sear it in a cast iron skillet and the liquid is just gonna like cook it more and not get a nice crispy skin on the outside. So this recipe you can go up to 36 hours with. I guess you can go up to like whenever, but 24 hours, you wanna poke it with a thermometer and make sure that it gets to 145 degrees. That is medium. My wife is pregnant. We couldn't make it medium rare or rare where I would have liked it, but whatevs. You know I had to do a little B-roll shot of this. It looks beautiful. This is before I seared it off. All I'm doing is letting it rest for a minute, and kind of drying it out. You can pat it with a paper towel to get some of that liquid off there if it's really juicy, but it, mine was pretty good to go. This is to get a nice, crisp skin on the outside. So while you're letting this rest, get yourself a cast iron skillet or some kind of skillet. This is so that we can sear it on both sides. I'm using butter, because butter is always better in this situation. Uh, I end up using the whole stick, of course, because why not? Right next to that, I've got my Dutch oven full of onions and carrots and potatoes. I should have roasted them in the oven, but it was a quick dinner, so I put them in there. I ended up putting what was left of the roast liquid into those roasted onions, peppers, just kidding, potatoes and onions and carrots. So once that pan is screaming hot, place your roast in it. I added more butter, as you can see, because why not? If you listen in real closely throughout this video, you can hear my cats crunching on their crunchies because they won't leave me alone, lol. So here we go with more butter, more butter, more butter. And I'm melting the butter is pretty much what I'm gonna do. So now that the butter is all melted, I'm gonna grab a spoon and I'm gonna spoon that butter right on top of that beef roast. It's gonna suck in the butter and make it even more flavorful, so why not? So now that it's got a nice crisp skin on the one side, we're gonna flip it over. Don't flip it over again, just flip it once. You don't wanna flip it too many times and have the poor thing break apart. And here I am throwing more butter on top of it. Can't you just see healthy flashing and big white lights?
OMG, it looks like a heart attack, but I promise it's really good. And this is enough for like a four to six family type deal. So here's what it looks like when you cut into it. It is a little bit pink and that's okay. It is fully cooked. It's 145 degrees plus now that you fried it in the skillet and it is ready to go. Let it sit for about five minutes and then cut it up. Yo, this is definitely one to keep in the recipe books. If you don't have a sous vide machine, definitely check it out. They are on Amazon. Just type in sous vide machine. And the Anova one that I am using is at about 120, 140 bucks on sale. But it's really simple. There's some carrots, some onions, and potatoes to go with it. Hopefully you guys enjoy this recipe. Give it a like. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, it's been really fun. I've got some extra time on my hands, so I'm doing a lot more vlogging. Trying to get things simple, professional, but hey, it's content, so we're getting somewhere. But I'll be doing all kinds of new things. If you guys have something that you want to see or you might have questions about, this stuff back here is actually going to be on a vlog. Uh, I'm sitting in my kitchen. That's that nice reverb you're hearing. Um, we're going to do all kinds of stuff. So being life with Jordy, you're going to see my day-to-day, -day, all kinds of interesting things. Feel free to question. Feel free to say hi. Um, some of the ladies at my church have no idea what YouTube is. So hi, ladies at my church, if you've asked me and seen the vlogs. And uh, here we are. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Maybe subscribe to my channel, which should be somewhere right here, over here. You can hit that little notification bell if you'd like. That way you know when I post. Um, I will post it on other social medias so you'll see when it happens. But you'll be the first ones to know. Um, we might do cool things, have guest people on. I'm definitely gonna do some cooking classes and we'll probably vlog those, but we'll see how it goes.